فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روبا الخير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبئنا أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إن إنه كان ظلوما جهولا ليعذب الله المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات ويتوب الله على المؤمنين والمؤمنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد We always commence by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم all his family members, his entire household, as well as his companions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us and grant us goodness. And may he bless our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah. May we all be blessed. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I really do not normally commence by thanking the people who have organized this, but today, I need to start with that saying that every time it's not like we are not thankful but the gratitude comes from the heart and as much as we know that those who always arrange and organize any form of community event are normally the ones who go away with the greatest reward it's important for us to make note of this short notice change of venue and I think it was a huge, huge blessing in the sense that we've now got an overwhelming response by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thank you for convincing me to speak. Barakallah feek. That would mean I, I didn't really want to say words, but mashallah, you know, I probably would have had 700 signatures tell me, you let us down. So alhamdulillah, I'm here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a private visit but just sharing a few words with you because I've been asked to do that at this event and I want to stick to my topic it's a very broad topic that I've chosen to speak on but inshallah at least I will start it and leave the rest with you every one of us needs to admit one thing one thing amongst so many other things the one thing we need to admit is we are trying hard to achieve the pleasure of Allah, aren't we? Every one of us. No matter what level we're on today, wouldn't you like tomorrow to be a better day? If the answer is yes, my brother, my sister, you're heading in the right direction. If the answer is no, we have much more to improve on, inshallah. Let's hope the day comes sooner rather than later. So we all would like to improve, every one of us. 
wants to improve ourselves. We want to change for the better, don't we? There are two main ways of changing. One is to change instantly. Take a look at Iyad, Al Qadi Iyad, Rahimahullah. It's reported that he used to engage, he himself says, he used to engage in little stealing and pinching and robbery. And one day he decided, let me go and pray. So as he entered the masjid, he heard the verses. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ beautiful verse where Allah is explaining how important it is for people to change has the time not come for those who are believers for their hearts to be softened towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has that time not come question and then Allah continues to say don't be like those who forgot Allah who left it for a while until their hearts became hard when I want to change and I tell myself tomorrow I will change that's already giving shaitan so many hours to play on our minds by the time tomorrow comes we'll say one more day when that one day passes we say okay next week then we'll say I'm only 16 it's called sweet 16 when I get a bit sour or stale then I might turn may Allah protect us Brothers and sisters, you are as sweet as you are, even if you're 40, subhanallah. So we need to know this and we need to remember, shaitan makes us wait. Just hang on, we'll change just now. This man says, as soon as he heard the verse, he began to cry and he promised Allah, never again will I go back to my ways, never again. Not at all. Imagine this was such a beautiful turning point and I'm sure from amongst us there are those who've turned by one verse one lecture one reminder one thing that happened in our lives we became better people sometimes it's the death of someone sometimes it's sickness sometimes it's an accident sometimes it's failure and sometimes it is success that makes us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so alhamdulillah we ask Allah to make us from those who can turn to him but there is another way of turning gently change one by one things in your life and improve yourself as the days pass and this is how i started the talk as the days go by you're changing one after the other and every day you're so happy you look back and you say i moved one inch mashallah wallahi before you know it you'll have moved a mile and before you know it you'll cross the continents and before you know it you get into the akhirah in a way that your bridge to paradise is made and built subhanallah May Allah grant that to us. So I want to today concentrate on the second type of change. The first one is there. Which I hope it has happened to us. And I hope even if the major change has come, we all believe that we still need to improve. None of us, not a single one of us can say, not a single one of us can say that now I'm okay, I'm enough, whatever I've got to is okay. I'm a big buzurug, you know, I'm a big pious saint. And that's it. Now I can just look at everyone else and instruct them and dish out. No. If that's the case, shaitan's got hold of us. We need to understand every one of us. Every one of us needs to improve from the level you're on. And this is why I've given the example in the past and I want to say it again. Some people have a spiritual BMW. Sorry, you know when I said Merc the last time, people thought that that was the car I liked. So I need to say BMW. Not to say I like the car. Wow. It's just a vehicle. Some of them are nice, mind you. So what happens is some people are on a spiritual BMW motoring down the highway, spiritual highway. MashaAllah, be focused. Make dua, you get to your destination as quick. Some people, no. They're in this little vehicle, 1960. Now it's become quite fancy, this little Mini Cooper. I think BMW owns it, to be honest with you. Yes, they bought it over. Wow, we know quite a bit, mashallah. 
So they're in this little car and they're tagging along slowly, slowly. The one who wins is the one who's dedicated and focused because if you're in a BMW cruising at 100 miles an hour, for example, and you lose focus for a split moment because of your mobile phone or anything else, you may spin the vehicle and that's the end of your journey. You'll have to have a huge change before you can actually get back on the path. Whereas if you're moving slowly but surely with a vehicle that might be slower, but you're dedicated, no distractions, and you focused every day covering so many miles, you will finish your journey certainly by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requires focus and dedication. May Allah grant it to us. So now I'd like to remind myself, I need a reminder, I'm a human being, and yourselves. If I want to change, what's a good way of starting? Obviously, we say here and now. Yes, that's right. The intention needs to come here and now. Bad habits need to be flicked off. The very bad habits completely eradicated. No space for them. But sometimes people do not provide us with practical solutions. I live a life. I've got to go to work. I see this. I, this happens to me. That happens to me. So how do I go about it? You know how to start off? One of the most important things, sleep on time. Wow. Did you know that? One of the most important things when you want to change your life is to sleep on time. Wow. Everyone is quiet because we're in the UK and the sun only sets after nine o'clock. Wow. See? Sleep on time. If you sleep on time, you will get up fresh early morning in time for what you are supposed to get up for. And what is that? What is that? What is that? Some are saying work. Some are saying fajr. Some are saying tahajjud. Wow. I didn't hear anyone say breakfast. <laughs> when the eye opens, what's the first thing you should do? You want to change your life? Relate the opening of your eye to the giver of that life. Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana. Wow, first words came out of my mouth. This is a change. The change starts with this consciousness of Allah. That's how it starts. So one might say, okay, you know what? I'm changing from today. I'm growing my beard. I'm changing from today. I'm covering myself fully, top to bottom. Good change. But if you're not conscious of the maker with that beard, you will still insult. With the good dressing, you will still insult. But when you're conscious of the maker, it's a holistic approach to the correction. This is why we say, as soon as your eye opens, first thing, tomorrow morning, remember this, you set your clock, as soon as it rings, I hope you set a clock that rings, subhanallah, at the right time, neither the breakfast nor the work, inshallah, at least for the fajr. As soon as the eye opens, what are you going to say? All praise is due to he who gave me this life. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahiyana. All praise is due to he, to Allah, who has given us this life after he had taken it away. You know the description of sleep. If you start your day with that dua, good news to you. What is to follow will be far more spiritual. It will be far more rightly guided. Your day has started on the right side, mashallah. And then you get up. I'm sure you've seen the clip where I spoke about lifting that blanket up, you know, makes you strong. When I was coming here, one of my relatives was telling me about a six pack, you know, boasting. I said, look, brother, normally the airlines that I travel on, they allow one big pack. So I don't waste my time. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, six pack. Wow. You can have a six pack. It won't help you. If you have that laziness in you, it's not going to let your blanket be lifted off with your strength. It requires the inner strength, even if you have one big pack, mashallah. And I'm not promoting that because it's very unhealthy. <laughs> so brothers and sisters, are we ready? Inshallah, we start off, we get to bed early, get up in the morning. These are practical lessons. You know, one might think, oh, I came all the way to listen to how to get up in the morning. Wallahi, it's a fact. Yes, you did. You did. And if you practice upon it, you will see the benefit of it. Believe me, the problem with us it's very easy to tell. Please don't do it to me. If you know my mobile phone number, do not do what I'm about to say to me. Okay? You can check when last they were online. WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, this guy tells us to sleep early. Look at him. Two in the morning. It's not me. It's automatic. 
Allah make it easy. Why do we get caught with our mobile phones at night such that we sleep late, we get up groggy, we've missed our salah. You know what happens when you've missed your fajr? Then one narration says shaitan pees in your ears. So what comes out, that yellow piece that comes out is not apricot jam, nor is it wax. It's actually pee. Astaghfirullah. Allah protect us. It's a narration. You didn't get up for your salah. You better clean your ears. It's a fact of life. May Allah protect us all, really. So it's important we get up for salah to avoid the ear being used as a we see. It's a fact. It's a fact. So if we've missed it, we're groggy because we slept late. We couldn't put our phone on flight mode. Just put it on flight mode. Go to bed. Believe me. Why? You fly out into dreamland. Beautiful dreams, mashallah. The minute you leave it on every little while, beep, beep, put it back. A little while, did it, put it back. What sleep, what dreams, what are you going to have? Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. So it's a practical solution. You need to be disciplined and so do I. May Allah protect us. May he grant us that discipline. Put it, block it, close it off. Someone needs you, you've got a landline. Subhanallah, they'll phone you on that landline. And then you've had a good sleep instead of getting up all groggy you upset with these people just because you haven't slept well now that you've slept well the way you said alhamdulillah ahyana ba'dama amatana and the way you've read your prayers and your dua supplications of early morning so blessed that you feel like a nice good spiritual person who's ready to spend that day in the best way possible then you start with your early morning prayer you declare praise of allah he's got you up in the morning beautiful cold air you've breathed a little bit allahu akbar subhanallah you've started your prayer declaring the greatness of allah putting your head on the ground for your maker early in the morning you've washed up and this is how spiritual your day is get up on time so you do not need to rush your prayer because once you've completed your prayer sit on the spot for a little while and say a few words of praise of your maker just be try that out believe me I am telling you, if you try this, you will see the difference in your life. Contentment, happiness, goodness. You're praising your maker, the giver of your life. Wow, subhanallah. This is why the Prophet ﷺ taught one of his wives, may Allah peace and blessings be upon all of them. He says, were you seated here from the time I left for Fajr? And now that I've come back after the sun has risen, Continually, continuously praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she said yes he said let me teach you four words if you were to repeat them thrice the reward of the repetition of those four words thrice will be far greater than anything that you've said in this entire time what are those four words do you know them subhanallah wa bihamdihi that is the word multiplied by four different statements what are the statements your homework is to go and find out what that means subhanallah i hope i don't get 700 emails this evening subhanallah wa bihamdihi praising allah adada khalqihi the number of his creatures wow he's got countless creatures I multiply the praise of Allah that I'm declaring by the number of his creatures and multiplied until he is pleased with that multiplication until he's happy subhanallah and the weight of his throne wow how that must be he alone knows and stretched as long as all his words or his signs amazing amazing how many of us have uttered those words even once when the Prophet ﷺ says, you say those words just before sunrise, see what happens. You've praised Allah, you've praised your maker. And then we need to learn something else. When we praise Allah, try and think of what you're saying. Don't just utter words that you don't know the meaning of, although they will have an effect, but the effect is not maximized unless and until you're concentrating and you know the meaning of these words. At least you understand roughly what you're saying, subhanallah. So this is why you will find if you start your day in that beautiful way, now you're up, your family is up, people are up, everyone is happy. You know, you make it a routine. We need to force ourselves off our beds. 
Yes. We would if we were to go to school or to work. What is work for? To earn a living, to buy a house, to buy a bit of food, to be able to live for another few years until we leave. Thereafter, where's your house after that? You can build that by getting up a few minutes earlier. That's how you build it. So you want to earn 60,000 pounds, for example, going out to work every morning, getting up at a specific time because you know I need 60,000 pounds. And Allah tells you, had you got up 30 minutes before that, you could have earned your paradise. And had you got up two hours before that, you could have almost guaranteed or should I say you could have built a far better bigger place with a higher rank in paradise that's now tahajjud one step higher then we see our family first thing in the morning when we see them what should we say do you know you're supposed to greet them with assalamu alaikum do you know that and someone says but I just saw you you live with me why should I greet you well, you don't know what spirituality is all about. Your child got up in the morning. First thing they look at you, Assalamu alaikum. Or you can add, Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be upon you. That's the way to greet them even early in the morning. To start off with that, Subhanallah. Do we do it in our homes? Let's change that, inshallah. Let's start. Let's start. It will help. So much so that even in the evening when you're reclining, you greet everyone, Assalamu alaikum. People look at you, where are you going? I'm going to bed. Because we don't even know. Our parents, I'm sure, in a lot of cases, used to have that. But we flicked it off. Why? Because now it's WhatsApp. That's why. BB. Did you hear something about BB? Did you hear? Can I tell you the latest news? Subhanallah. Imagine you're hearing it from me. <laughs> BB was feeling left out from Apple and Android. So they've actually applied to create an app. Did you hear that? Check the news. It's on there today. So good news to all the users of Android and Apple. You'll be having BB soon there. And the reason is those with BB don't need to divorce their BBs. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah make it easy for us. Really. But the worry I have is now that that's going to happen, it's going to make it more difficult to do what I told you. Sleep on time. Much more difficult. So we've got one more challenge. Why? Because BB is keeping you up both ways. MashaAllah. If you understood what I said. Allah make it easy my brothers and sisters yes you greet your child you get up early you say good words you acknowledge the breakfast that is there whether it is a mug of tea or whether it is a little bit more than that or less than that you acknowledge it you appreciate it try your best to have that little meal at least collectively not one not singular in today's world Everyone's working different hours, everyone's sleeping different hours, so we hardly get any family time. And that, especially up north, should not be the case. Subhanallah. Look at me saying up north. I come from a real village compared to up north as well, where we can have all three meals with all our children, mashallah. May Allah keep it that way. But when you're living in a fast world, that's not possible. So any opportunity you get, seize it. If not all four of you, at least three of you, two of you, it helps. Wallahi, collectively you thank Allah. When you start your meal, your, your mug of tea, you don't just slurp it whilst you're busy with your hair or something else, you know. Mashallah, I see nowadays multitask people. They've got their phone under the scarf, you know, clicked on. They're busy doing something and they're chewing at the same time. I don't know how it works, but it's reality. Subhanallah. Hands free. Wow. New type of hands free. Only for Muslim women. Allahu Akbar. Allah bless us, grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, if we are to start the meal with Bismillah, the blessedness of that meal is changed completely, positively, completely. A lot of us eat, we munch our food without even thinking. We sip our tea and yes, I'm talking to myself and yourselves. Wallahi, this is what happens. We eat and we have the best of meals. People are suffering across the globe and we're busy concerning ourselves and we should be worried about how best to be able to help them humanitarian and so on. Hence we have Alimdad and the others trying to do a lot of good work, subhanallah. But with us, we couldn't even relate the food to the giver of the food. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. That's the minimum you should say and I should say. Let's change that. Come on. Why I say this is 
all these things I'm saying make you conscious of your maker. Hence, you become a better person. So people start thinking, okay, I'm becoming a better person. Here goes the beard. Mashallah, good change. But that's not the only change. In fact, you need consciousness with the change. And that starts the time you sleep, the time you get up. When you get up, what's the first words you say? What are the first deeds you do? And how do you treat the others? And when you're putting anything, food or drink to your mouth, what's the first thing you think of? It should be your maker and the giver of that meal and the drink. This is practical ways of changing. Now your day started and then say, for example, you get into the shower, the bathroom, for example, how long do you take there? Are you conscious of the other people who live with you? How much water do you use? Are you conscious of the fact that people don't have water? There's going to be a water shortage across the globe. They say the next war will be in, not about oil, but water. Allahu Akbar. This is what we're reading. Do you know that? So if you don't waste water, you're actually engaging in a spiritual deed. If you are conscious of people to use the bathroom after you and clean it up a little bit, you are conscious of who you are. It's a spiritual deed. You know, we've spoken about it in the past, leaving the bathroom in a good state so that others who come after you, you know, don't need to walk in. Allah protect us. It's a fact. You need to be conscious of it. Like you wouldn't like that. Why do you not mind it for others? You need to mind it as well. May Allah protect us. Really, these are good deeds that we take for granted. So simple, so easy to engage in. And this is what the consciousness of Allah starts with. When you are conscious of Him from the moment you've got up. You know, you, you had a bath, subhanAllah. You put on your clothes. What type of clothing have you put on? Improve it tomorrow. Improve it. If you have had clothing that is not all covering or perhaps it is a little bit tight, improve on it. Come on, you can do that. If your mind is not set on changing it towards the better, then you have a lot more to improve on. May Allah grant it to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Because if we're going backwards on that, we'll be going backwards on many other things as well. We need to know as the days pass, we're becoming older. We're getting closer to Allah. We're not getting further away. So subhanallah, here we are, whilst we were dressing, we praised Allah. We tried to make sure that whatever we've put on will not displease our maker. First thing in the morning, mashallah, you put on your clothing and you looked in the mirror. What came to your mind? Ah, that dude's going to look at me and say, wow. Is that what came in your mind? If that's the case, really, we have much more to improve on. We have to think to ourselves, if I were to die today, I pray Allah grants me Jannah. Wow, that's a wow. Allahu Akbar. If I were to die today, if this was the last time I was leaving my home, and who knows, there are so many people who've had it such, they've left the home, and that's the last time they left. If this was the last time I left my home, what would become of me? That's the question. So now I've dressed, thank Allah. When we're leaving the home, Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah. In the name of Allah, I lay my full trust in Allah. This is a dua. It's a sunnah. It's taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it has so much blessedness in it. So good. It enhances the spirituality. We are praying that Allah looks after our property whilst we're away, looks after us and looks after the rest of our family as well whilst everyone is gone in their different directions. When we come back, Alhamdulillah, subhanallah. Anyway, we've taken our lunch, we've gone to work. When we are going to work, how do we go? You, we're either, you know, going by car or by train in this particular country, a lot of people, or perhaps walking even in some cases, maybe biking it and so on. Learn to be courteous on the road. That's the consciousness of Allah. It's a teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to be courteous on the road. Did you know that? Look at how we have started with the sleep and we've moved, combed through what should be happening. This is called a change in your life. If you're a person who's not at all courteous, very impolite on the road, you have to become a better Muslim. You have to become a better Muslim, a better person. So you need to give way. You need to understand. You need to smile. You need to greet. You need to realize and understand whom you are speaking to, whom you are interacting with. These are human beings. They have a right just like yours. You know, if someone comes in or they want to come in and you don't allow them, there may be a time that you want to come in somewhere and they won't allow you. But if you've allowed, you've created a trend. They will allow. Subhanallah. I know some of the youngsters have cash answers and they say, well, I've allowed and they haven't allowed. Well, they are different people, but it will catch. Don't worry. Keep on doing it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
What time do you get to work? That's another question. If you want to change your life, make sure you get there five minutes before time. Five minutes before time. You know what you must be thinking? You told us five o'clock, you came at six, quarter past six, and you're telling us five minutes before time. Brothers and sisters, I was told quarter past six. That's what I was told. Wow. And I was here on the dot. Wasn't I, brothers? Alhamdulillah. You must be saying, why didn't you tell us quarter past six? Well, there you are. At least you're all here, mashallah. It's quarter past six. Let's get back to the five minutes. Five minutes before time, clock in. Work, school, wherever you are. Minimum of five minutes. Come on. May Allah make us not people who rush all the time. Once in a while you may have to, but not every single time. We're supposed to be disciplined. And then we get to work. We haven't stolen the time from work because if you arrived at half eight, for example, and you were supposed to start at eight o'clock, that 30 minute salary is prohibited upon you. Do you know that? Prohibited upon you. By right, you should be reimbursing it, returning it, or benefit the company according to that amount of wealth somehow. Unless you go to your boss and you say, I'm sorry, and he says, it's okay. I don't think they'd say it's okay for too long. And then we have a tea time, a tea break. But before I get there, let me say something important. This will relate to every one of us. You get to work, you get to school, you get to wherever you're supposed to get to. You're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Do you know what that means? We're busy with the newspaper. And you're supposed to be working. You're busy on the net, doing what? Surfing, checking the price of vehicles, eBay, and so on. But what's going on? You, your workplace. You're using facilities of your work. You're wasting the time of your workplace. You're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. You're wasting time on chats and Skype and Facebook and Twitter, whatever else it is. It's the wrong time. It is the wrong time. That is your stuff that you're doing during company time. Imagine if your boss had to hear me, they might be thinking, this guy, we need him here, man. <laughs> Allah, make it easy. No, I haven't been paid to say that. But it's a fact. We need to be dedicated, think of ways, improving solutions and so on. Work hard. You have your break. MashaAllah, you go out for your break. Again, you remember Allah. Praise Allah during your day. Talk to him a few times during the morning. By praising him, declaring a few words, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, ask his forgiveness, Ya Allah, forgive me, things I know, things I don't know. Scatter all these words, scatter them through your morning, through your afternoon, MashaAllah. Lunch break, if you can come home, you come. If you cannot come home, Alhamdulillah, one of those things. You make sure that whatever you've done is within the pleasure of Allah. Your dhuhr, your midday, just post midday prayer, don't miss it and try not to delay it. Make a plan somehow, somehow make a plan. That's the word we use, make a plan. I'm sure we can. Read your salah. You know, people say, I cannot read my salah at work. My brother, if you really want to, you can. I really cannot. No, it's very difficult. As difficult as it is, you can. Where there is a will, they say there is a way. Allahu Akbar. Where there is a will, there is a way. But the minute we feel apologetic, no, I can't, you know, so on. Really, it's tough, you know. Then automatically, the solutions don't come that quick. So we need to understand. Dhuhr, Salah, how can we miss it? It's Allah. He's given us the time. And subhanallah, the day continues. Let's jump. The time we come home. Yes, perhaps we might be tired. You know, different people come home at different timings. The brothers come home. The sisters come home sometimes. Some, some may not be going to work and so on. But typically, a person who comes back from work, you might be tired. You might be, you know, having had different experiences through your days on a different temperament and mood. Leave that outside the door. You come in with a smile. That's a sunnah. If it is a sunnah to smile outside to your fellow brothers and sisters, what about back at home? It's even a bigger sunnah because now it's a double act of worship. One is a relation who's so close to you and two is a fellow believer. Subhanallah, the smile and it's there. Imagine you come home, you've had a tough day, really bad. People have let you down and your face doesn't show it. You come home with a smile. Nobody knows what happened. You've got the sparkle in your eyes. When you smile, your eyes sparkle on their own, on their own. Try it. So you come home with a smile, you greet with salam, you embrace your children, your family, and so on, your spouse. Do we do that? Question. 
I think a lot of us are guilty. And then we say, I'm a good Muslim. Wow, good Muslim? These are basics that we need to change. These are practical steps that we need to take to change our lives. This is how your life will change. Be dedicated when you're at work, when you're out of the house, or even when you're in the house and you're on the social applications and so on. Do not be unfaithful. No. It comes back to haunt you. Say what you want. If you're unfaithful, it's a seed of cactus that you've sown, the thorns of which shall prick you to start with. Allah protect us. It doesn't help at all. Immorality, promiscuity, unfaithfulness. These are things that mess your day. Be conscious, be dedicated. Think of whom you've left behind back at home. Focus on them. Make dua for them. Pray for them. Appreciate the sacrifice made for you by those. Appreciate it. Realize it. Think of the gift of Allah upon you. You know, sometimes people want everything for themselves, not realizing, brother, you cannot have everything for yourself. No, you've got to have some things and leave some things because you cannot have everything you want to have the way you want to have it. And we've said it millions of times. I'm sure you know the quotation that paradise would lose its value if we had to have everything we wanted in this world. So this is why we say, you come back home, the bare minimum is to set a time limit for your phone. In today's world, believe me, I'd like to think more than half of the marriages and the homes that are suffering for different reasons connected to the mobile phone and the way it's used. Do you know that? More than half. And I'm telling you this from experience. Because we don't have a time limit. We don't set limits for ourselves as to where is the line? Where do I draw it? We would ignore our spouse and it happens both ways. Men ignoring their wives and women ignoring their husbands. It happens both ways. And we ignore our children. And what example do we set for them? You've got to set it aside. Believe me, we've got to fight ourselves to put it aside. Unless you've struck a deal to communicate via the phone, even inside the house, which is not healthy. But believe me, I've said a lot. I've spoken for 37 minutes. And I'd like to tell you that what I've given you is just a tip. And the reason why I spoke this way is whatever I've said is relevant, not just to Muslims, but even to non-Muslims. You get up early, you pray, you thank Allah, thank the Almighty, thank the giver of life. Set yourself some limits, see how you treat other people. You know, we have gratitude that is never shown in the home for a plate of food that's just been put in front of you. We can never say thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Why? Because we're weak. We have to become better people. When you start thanking people for the meal they've made for you, you will definitely become a better person. When you thank people for the little goodness they've done for you, look into their eyes, say, Mom, appreciate it. Your wife, whatever name you call her, I hope it's a good name, I appreciate it. Wow, look at her. She says, are you sure? I say, yes, I am. I am. I am. Then she say, well, why did you leave half of it there? <laughs> and then you got to say, for a romantic reason, subhanallah, <laughs> for you to finish it up. You got to know how to talk. Brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful life that Allah's given us if we'd like to make it beautiful. But if we want to mess it up, it's also quite easy. In fact, it's easier to mess it up. People ask, why is it that I can't do what I want? Do what you want? You can, but you pay for it, which means, when you do something, the reaction of that action, you are enslaved by. You might have been free to do something, but when it comes back to you, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it at that time. May Allah protect us. So this is why we say, let's try our best to become better people. And like I said, two ways of changing. One is to change dramatically, drastically overnight. Wow, subhanAllah, everything seems to have focused and we now there. Remember, Change is not just an outward physical change. It's got to do with your life changing. You need to become an asset 
in your home a better person a young man or woman whom in the home when you're not there they really miss you they really miss you that is when you're a good muslim you've changed your life you are an asset when people look at you they really smile at you a broad smile you can feel the warmth the smile is coming from the heart why because you've been a genuine person you're not a bad mouth you know people at home do so much for us we live together make life easy for people give them their space as well we don't need everyone to do everything according to what I want them to do or we want them to do no give them their space within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them also make their choices and decisions so I hope these few words I've shared with you this afternoon or this evening I don't even know what to say because the light is still bright and according to my time I flew in this morning and it's supposed to be dark by now so we were battling as to whether to say tonight or this evening so we said today's talk subhanallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to grant us Jannah, to open our doors and really to help us in such a way that we can improve ourselves and understand what we've learned today. And that is that when change comes, it should be holistic change. Even if it is step by step, even if it is these little things of character and conduct, you know, coupled with the praise of Allah, the consciousness of him by taking his name, everything we do, Inshallah, the, the more we increase these good things, the better people we will be. And inshallah, we will be an asset to the ummah at large, as well as to ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.